All right, you ready? I'm going to give you guys a scripture that God has been speaking to me through lately. Are you ready for it? So it's a scripture that I've read multiple times over the years, but I feel like lately God has been bringing something completely and totally different out of it. You notice how he does that? It's cool. I can remember sharing that with my dad when I was younger. Like, it's so weird when I read the Bible, like it'll mean something completely different than the last time that I read it. And I can remember him saying, son, that's why it's called the living word. Except he didn't make that face when he said it. So anyways, it's uh, in Philippians 3. And I'm going to read the message translation because I love the fact that it says dung. (laughs) Are you ready? So in Philippians 3, it says the real believers, and he's talking, he's contrasting the the religious Pharisees as opposed to the real believers that are empowered by the Holy Spirit. So it says the real believers are the ones the Spirit of God leads to work away at this ministry, filling the air with Christ's praise as we do it. We couldn't carry this off by our own efforts, and we know it. Even though we can list what many might think are impressive credentials, you know my pedigree, a legitimate birth, circumcised on the eighth day, an Israelite from the elite tribe of Benjamin, a strict and devout adherent to God's law, a fiery defender of the purity of my religion, even to the point of persecuting the church, a meticulous observer of everything set down in God's law book. The very credentials these people are waving around as something special I'm tearing up and throwing out with the trash, along with everything else I used to take credit for. I love that. And I just wanted to highlight the fact that he's saying everything that I used to take credit for of just working and doing things for God as opposed to responding to God and becoming part of what God is doing as we're motivated and empowered by the Holy Spirit through our faith in Jesus. And I feel like what God's been speaking through the scripture, I'm going to continue to read it, is just a practical application of how the resurrection life looks moment to moment and second to second. And I love when God uses a scripture that's speaking of an amazing principle. And it's like, God, that's something that I'm believing you for. But it's easy to miss how that can look, like I said, from moment to moment and second to second. And that's exactly what I wanted to share because I feel like God's been speaking through this. So it says, uh, the very credentials these people are waving around as something special, I'm tearing up and throwing out with the trash, along with everything else I used to take credit for. And why? Because of Christ. Yes, all the things I once thought were so important are gone from my life. Compared to the high privilege of knowing Christ Jesus as my master firsthand, everything I thought I had going for me is insignificant. Are you ready for it? It's dog dung. I've dumped it all in the trash so that I could embrace Christ and be embraced by him. I didn't want something petty in, in, I didn't want some petty inferior brand of righteousness that comes from keeping a list of rules when I could get the robust kind that comes from trusting Christ, God's righteousness. And what I feel like God's been speaking through this scripture is Paul saying At any given moment in time, what I used to focus on, what I used to put my faith in was my righteousness, what I could do for God. And what he's saying is I would gladly give up those things and throw them in the trash that moment per moment, second by second, I can embrace Christ and I can know him personally. And I feel like what God was speaking through that scripture to me was I can fall back into 
my religiosity, my self-righteousness, what I can do for God, whether it's praying or reading the Bible or loving people or whatever it is that I'm doing. And as I'm doing those things, I can be putting faith in myself and my righteousness. I'm not doing it because I'm necessarily led by the Holy Spirit. I'm doing it because I'm trying to impress God or I'm trying to earn those brownie points with God. And he's saying, I would gladly throw those things in the trash and allow my righteousness to come from my faith in Jesus that I can know him right now in this moment in time as my focus shifts from my righteousness, what I'm doing for God and receiving a greater revelation of what Jesus has done for me because he loves me. So I hope that makes sense. Like practically, thought by thought, second to second, I get to choose whether I am leaning on myself, whether I'm leaning on my righteousness, focusing on what I need to do for God, or receiving what God has done for me and why he's done it for me because of the Father's love. And so that ties that uh, ties together. Actually, we'll jump over to uh, Galatians a really well-known scripture in Galatians 2.20, just because I feel like it ties together with it so well. Oh, look at I just so happen to have a piece of gum right there in Galatians 2. It was my bookmark. So um, it says, let me see, let me find it. So Paul saying, and like coming back to what Paul felt like he had going for him, from the world standards. He had everything, the lineage, he had the knowledge, he had the friends, he had the position to be in a good standing with God through religion. And he knows that it's all nothing compared to the only righteousness that we find in Christ or true righteousness that we find through faith in Jesus. So he says, this is Galatians 2, uh, 19. It says, what actually took place is this. I tried keeping rules and working my head off to please God, and it didn't work. So I quit being a law man so that I could be God's man. Christ's life showed me how and enabled me to do it. I identified myself completely with him. Indeed, I have been crucified with Christ. My ego is no longer central. It is no longer important that I appear righteous before you or have your good opinion, and I am no longer driven to impress God. Christ lives in me. The life you see me living is not mine, but it is lived by faith in the Son of God. And that is so power that or powerful. Did I say that is so power? It is it's so power. So it's so cool because he's saying the life that I live, I live through faith in the Son of God. And I believe what something that Paul is portraying through this is he's saying moment by moment, second to second, I'm dying. I'm dying to what I have to offer that I can be part of this relationship with God, that I'm actually being led by him. I'm following him and I'm being empowered by the Holy Spirit to be Christ-like in any given situation. And I know something that God has been revealing to me over and over and over again throughout the years is what that resurrection power and that resurrection life looks like. And I feel like these scriptures are really verbalizing it really well, that it's not just an overall belief system that we have it's moment to moment we're dying to what we feel like we have to offer god that we can receive the truth of jesus's righteousness and we're becoming empowered to become christ-like not as we try harder but as we're learning to trust him more as we're learning to put all of our confidence and all of our faith in christ and i feel like that's exactly what paul is saying he's no longer driven to impress people or impress God. He's not biting that bait when the enemy's fishing in those thoughts in his mind of, okay, you need to try harder because this person thinks that, or you need to try harder because God's disappointed in you. He's like, no, I am righteous through my faith in Jesus, and I'm letting go of everything I feel like I can do for God that I can embrace Christ with both hands. And then in that scripture that I read a couple of moments ago, not Galatians 2, but in the other scripture, I'm sure if I stall for long enough and I think about it for a second, I can remember what scripture that was since it was only five minutes ago. 
it was Philippians 3. He goes on to talk about the resurrection power. Actually, we'll just read it. How about that? So it says, I gave up all that inferior stuff, inferior righteousness, the righteousness that we try to obtain in our own ability as opposed to receiving it through Christ. Um, So I could know Christ personally, and that's exactly what's happening. We're exchanging our best efforts to know Christ in the moment, second to second, which I find to be the greatest reward we could ever find, but we don't have to wait for it. We find it as we die to what we can do for God and actually receive the presence of God in this moment. And like Ephesians says, we're seated in the heavenlies. So it says... uh, Um, So I could know Christ personally and experience his resurrection power. And there it is. That's exactly what I feel like God's saying the resurrection life looks like. As we continue to humble ourselves and we continue to lean on and put our faith in Christ, we're finding that resurrection life that we've been longing and looking for in that intimate relationship with God. So I hope that makes sense to you guys, and I hope it encourages you guys where you're at and just knowing that it is available and that God is working in our lives and he is continuing to bring us to that place like Paul to where it's no longer us who are living, but we live this life by our faith and through our faith in the Son of God. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.